conversation today is talking about good debt, bad debt. I think this is very important here for people in the house who are married or in a relationship to be discussing, this is a great segue here, communicating on how we're going to operate the next two to 24 months, okay? Um, nearly everybody is like in agreement when you listen to the major financial gurus, uh, experts, economists, right? Nearly everybody is saying the same thing. Hyperinflation is here. Increased inflation is here. Taxes are going up, okay? Wages, income is starting to uh, uh, level out, okay? If you are someone that has been job hopping, I know that was a strategy during COVID. Uh, uh, people were job hopping, going from 60,000 a year, and then they jump to 80, and then they jump to 100, and then they jump to 120. Uh, get ready because the market's about to reevaluate your worth, okay? So if you're in a career, you're in a, a, a solid, you know, uh, a job or career position that you recently just acquired and you're making a significant amount of money compared to pre-COVID, it's like, like you have the same experience, same knowledge, but because of the environment and just the explosion of uh, money being printed into the marketplace, okay, be very prepared for when companies start reevaluating who's who's the assets and who's not because you might get caught with your pants down. So if you're getting paid 100 grand a year, 120, 140, 150 from pre-COVID, you're making like 80, 70. You got this huge boost because you jumped to a new company. Be very prepared for when the, the company itself starts to reevaluate their earnings. Um, because what's going to happen right now, I think it just happened today. The Fed increased uh, rates um, 0.75, I think is the number. So almost one whole point, right? Increase. The direct uh, result when rates go up, lending gets tighter. It's, it's going to be happening. So you have the combination of increasing living expenses across the board, food and gas being like the highest increase, 50% year over year increase. 8.3% I think was the latest inflation rate, 8%. My goodness, a couple years ago it was like three, four, if that. So that's what they say, percent. The reality, when you look at your gas bill and your food expense, the reality is you average everything out, the reality is inflation is more like 15 to 20%. Sounds like a crazy number, but that is the reality, right? And so you've got this issue of increased inflation. Uh, wages are going to start flatlining and companies are going to uh, fire people, right? Companies are already putting out articles. If you're listening to the correct information, big companies, Tesla, right? Um, banks, major banks, corporations are going to be letting people go because a market correction is coming. Right. It's not going to be the same as what happened in 08, uh, but there is going to be a market correction. And those who are not preparing, those who are not building relationships like what Dr. Eddie and I have, like this community, if you're not getting rooted in community, in addition to building relationships with lenders, um, creditors, banks and that such you might just get caught with your pants down and so today's lesson is really just going over good debts to have bad debts to either get rid of or just service and I'll kind of talk about what what I mean by that so I'm gonna to come to the board here and just kind of do a recap got to know our numbers first and foremost whether you have a job business or both self-employed hourly salary commission base a little bit of everything um reevaluate your numbers now now's the time because i'm telling you it's coming like everybody is saying it next two to to 24 months so two years or less market correction it's gonna hurt this time so know your numbers know where you're at know what's coming in know what's coming out know that leftover cash flow and let's evaluate your debts okay when we're having the conversation of good debt versus bad debt, uh, what is good debt, what is bad debt, for the most part, this is all opinion-based. Even what I'm telling you right now, it's all opinion-based. If you listen to Grandpa Dave, everything is bad debt. If you listen to Grant Cardone, nearly everything can be good debt, right? Or Robert Kiyosaki, they, they, they're they very, very far on each side, right? In terms of their philosophies, their mentalities, 
there's there's truth in both conversations and so when you're getting fed information um the most i think the most effective thing to do is to decide who i want to listen to do i want to listen to denzel do i want to listen to robert kiyosaki do i want to listen to dave ramsey decide who it is that you want to listen to and if you add anyone else into your your education uh, uh plans when you're binge watching youtube videos instagram videos um courses and whatnot make sure you're not listening to a dave ramsey and a robert kiyosaki because you're going to get two different paradigms and you're going to be left in a state of confusion you're not going to know what to do and then the opportunities are going to pass you by so i actually work with a ton of clients that are Dave Ramsey clients, not necessarily worked with him one-to-one, -one, but within Financial Peace University, or they worked with a uh, certified uh, Dave Ramsey financial coach. And so I have a ton of these clients. They were, they're rooted in debt being terrible, debt being bad. And you're wondering, why the heck are they working with me? Well, they've come to the conclusion now that they've mastered all of the principles, the basic fundamentals of finance, and they're looking to add a layer of protection, looking to take on a new skill, right? They want to know why debt is so bad. They want to know why or how I can be using debt to increase my income. And if I have the fundamentals of finance in line and I know how to manage my money and I cash flow positive, then debt should not be an issue if I acquire it. I should know how to use debt if I've gone through Financial Peace University, became debt free. Um, you know, I'm investing, I'm saving, I'm tithing, I'm giving debt. You should no longer fear debt. You should have mastery over it. Now it's a matter of how do we uh, leverage this tool to do what major banks and corporations do around the world uh, to maximize their profits, to generate income, to reduce tax liability, all that good stuff. So that is a uh, recap there. I'll give you my opinion. I do believe there's good debt and there's bad debt. A good debt to me, I personally, my, my favorite is any type of revolving type of debt. And I've listed all those revolving debts right here. You've got credit cards, PLOCs, stands for personal line of credit, business line of credit, personal credit card, business credit cards. You've got HELOCs, first lien, home equity line of credit or second lien home equity line of credit you've got home equity conversion mortgages this is not a reverse mortgage it is a it is a, a spin-off from that model works a little bit differently it's an insurance product comes with some guarantees so it's a very interesting revolving tool you've got all-in-one loans and then you've got insurance backed line of credit or securities backed line of credit this is where you can use a 401k, a retirement account, any type of uh, qualified or, or brokerage account. Let's say you got three, four, 500 grand in there built up and market correction comes, market crash comes, hyperinflation comes, and you're no longer making either enough funds or you need a little extra funds. And if you don't want to tap into your retirement, right? If you don't want to lose or, or um, interrupt the compound interest that you're earning, you can actually get a line of credit as collateral against the asset without having to sell the asset, which is pretty cool. So my asset can keep growing and then I can use the money, say two, three, four hundred grand, and then go invest that, create cash flow, whatever I pay in interest. I can offset it by whatever amount of money I'm generating in cash flow, right? To offset borrowing costs. So good debt recap, my personal favorite, anything that's revolving, what is revolving debt? Okay. These are the terms right here. You can take your notes, uh, the way you can evaluate or qualify a revolving debt or good debt. In my opinion, is it must be calculated simple interest. Okay. The line is, is open ended meaning I can borrow from it, right? So if I have say a $50,000 line of credit and I withdraw 25 grand, that 25 grand is now in my checking, okay? Went from the line to the checking account. There's 25 grand and now I'll owe 25 grand at whatever interest rate. That interest rate starts to calculate on a daily basis for however long I owe 25 grand. Now the key thing is, what am I going to do with this 25 grand, right? Well, there's a few options. Let's say uh, 
you came across an investment opportunity. Okay, so that means you are willingly using debt, money that's not technically yours, it's OPM, other people's money, and you're gonna put it into an investment that you know, you trust, you've done your homework, and it's going to yield you a 15% return in one year, and let's just say the cost of borrowing is 5% in one year, right? If I owe 25K for one year, I'll pay 5% in interest. Let's just say that's the case. Ask yourself, is what I'm doing right here a bad thing or a good thing? It's all based on opinion. It's all based on your personal capacity to manage your own personal finances. It's all based on your experience. So when I'm working with some clients that are fully disciplined, fully aware of their finances where every dollar goes, they will look at this and say, this is a pretty interesting opportunity, right? They'll say this is a good debt because even though they're saving their money and they're investing their money and they're making more than what they spend, so they got the, you know, the, the fundamentals down packed, but they don't have 25 grand liquid available to make this investment. Maybe they only had five grand or 10. So they leveraged their credit, went to the bank, they got this line of credit, and they're only gonna use, in this example, 50% of the line, it's 25 grand. They did the numbers, okay, my borrowing cost is 5% for one year. I can earn 15% on 25 grand for one year. Do the math, the net return, ROI, is 10%, not bad. <clears throat> you guys know that I've been teaching you velocity banking many sessions now. When you incorporate velocity banking into this strategy, we can effectively reduce the borrowing costs down to about one to two percent effectively how do we do that well you take all your income and park it right some people call it paycheck parking we're gonna park your paychecks into the line of credit and have it effectively manipulate this rate down to an effective actual rate of somewhere around one to two percent and then we incorporate what nice little credit card either on the personal business side maybe both in this case let's say it's this is a business investment let's say you got a business credit card and we can earn two to three percent on cashback rewards so you just went from five minus two three right three percent and then the fact that you'd be parking your paychecks into the line of credit and that effectively reduces the three down to like two one in some cases the goal when I'm working with my clients is to get as close to zero as possible. In many cases, we're literally offsetting the borrowing costs. So then what most would consider bad debt, really anything that is not yours, I just turned it into A. And so I'm borrowing at nothing to earn 15 to put me in a better financial position. And this is what major uh, banks, corporations, you name it. This is what they're doing all day, every day. Let me, uh, am I pinned, uh, Dr. Eddie? Just wanna make sure everyone can see my screen nice and clear. Okay, cool. Um, so before I go any further, do one more recap and then I'll see if anyone has any questions so far and then I can dive into uh, bad debt a little bit. But recap, know your numbers. Here are my favorite tools, OPM, right? Other people's money from the banks that offer these tools right here. They gotta be revolving. Interest has to be uh, calculated simple daily, open-ended. And the other cool feature is with these credit lines because they're just open, what open means is there's not necessarily a timeline as to when you have to pay this back. Oftentimes, <clears throat> if you get a line of credit, it might say that the line is open for five years, 10 years, right? That's a limitation. Or it might just say open-ended, meaning it's just, it's open for however long you need. Some banks might say five years, 10 years. If that's the case, then in five years, if you don't owe anything on the line of credit and you don't do anything, they can close the credit line. They just close it. Or you would notify the bank, hey, I want to keep this account open. There might be a credit check with that. Um, but what I do to really avoid that is I uh, will increase my credit lines or I just look for uh, credit lines that are just simply open-ended. So I can have 25 grand and technically owe 25 grand for as long as possible. Now that's not the intent. The intent is to use capital and create more capital, result in cash flow. So this is capital. It's now creating capital, right? I'm not taking a seed 
and spending it on consumer items that doesn't produce more seed. Take your agriculturally here. I have 25,000 uh, seeds and I'm gonna throw it on a field, okay? I can either take my seeds and I can give it away for free. That would be unwise because now I'm broke, busted. And so what a lot of Christians do, they give all their stuff away for free and now you're the broke one. And now someone's gonna take care of you, right? You're either being funded by someone, something, some organization, or you're doing the funding. I love to be in a position of funding, being the, the lender. I love that. And I know my scripture tells me that I can be that, a lender to many nations. A nation could be a simple household, the Rodriguez household, the Ramirez household, the Connor household. <laughs> Last names are technically nations, depending on how many lines you go back or go forward on. So I like to have these rules in place for me personally i like to use debt only for capitalization to create more capital or to remove bad capital stuff that is draining my cash flow that i can either recapture or recover so i can either use good debt to create more income or use good debt to remove debt okay, an example of a bad debt in my opinion is usually anything that is amortized. Um, in some cases, an amortized debt, even though it's quote unquote, in my opinion, a bad debt, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm gonna try and pay that off fast. For example, student loans, I'm pretty sure most of you would agree, student loans are bad debts, okay? I would totally agree with you on that notion. Student loans are terrible debts to, to own and have, why? <clears throat> it's like, even in bankruptcy, these stay with you, right? It's weird. Okay? You, there's like no way to get rid of this unless you pay it off or someone else pays it off. When I'm working with my clients, I like to show them how to have other people pay your debts off. And in the meantime, you just service the debt. That is one option. The other option is you just simply pay it off. Okay, no big deal. I have a ton of clients do that. Now, an example, bad debt, student loan. Let's say you owe 200 grand and it's composed of a multitude of debts. Maybe it's like six, seven, but it's totaling 200 grand. And the average interest rate across the board is like 6%. As it is at the moment, I would say that's a bad debt. But what happens when a government comes in and says, hey, we're not gonna charge you any interest on the debt for a temporary period of time. Well, now in my head, it just went from a bad debt to uh, I'd say in between. It's not a good debt. I'm not gonna put it as a good debt. Still gotta get rid of it at some point, but it's not something that I'll focus my attention on because there's no cost to hold that debt. So if, I, so if I'm in a market crash, a market correction, uh, husband loses their job, wife loses their job, and this debt is at zero, not gonna be a focus. My focus is gonna be on how do I recover income? And then when I'm working with clients on top of that, I'll say, hey, Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, Mr. and Mrs. Client, um, you work for ABC Corporation, which is a Fortune 500 company, and you've been there for 15 plus years. Um, when's the last time you asked for a raise or promotion? I, I, this is insane to me, but I work with a lot of career people right? Blue collar, white collar. Can't tell you how many women I work with, mothers, that have been in corporations for many years, multiple decades, and they never ask for raises. I was working with this one woman, I think she was in her 50s, right? Been in the business in this particular corporation, 15 plus years, I think in the nursing field. Yes, that's what it was. 50 plus years old. I said, when's the last time you asked for a promotion? She said, um, 10 years ago. I was like, what 10 years ago my goodness you've been in this corporation you're an asset the least you can do is request a board meeting all the managers and reevaluate your position at that abc company that's the very least that you can do get in the door have a conversation with the higher ups and so when i was talking to this woman and then a few other clients i was telling i was like look for the last two years now um correct me if i'm wrong the last almost two years, student loans have been at 0%, right? The moment COVID hit, like a couple months later, they um, they put everything on like forbearance, even mortgages were on forbearance. Um, student loans were not charging any interest, right? And they're still not charging interest on your student loans. And then it got extended to October of 2022 and we're in June, right? So October, September, something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm right on that. So 
in that time when I was working with my clients, I was like, hey guys, um, your companies, these, these, these corporations that you guys work for, they just got a buttload of cash in the last two years. I mean a buttload. I mean like 10 truckloads. Imagine like 10, 18 wheelers with pallets, $100 bills, pallets, six, seven feet high. Those corporations have it digitally in their accounts. They got millions, they got billions of dollars sitting in the last two years and the next year or two. These companies are about to reevaluate who is their, who are their assets and who are their liabilities. And they're gonna sift through and they're gonna remove the excess and they're gonna keep the assets. If you wanna remain as an asset in the company that you work for, one of the best things you can do is set up board meetings uh, with your managers, develop strong relationship, communication skills, um, present what it is you wanna bring to the table. And in this case, I was telling my clients, hey, negotiate this debt while it's on 0%. Negotiate it. Be like, okay, um, I wanna be X, Y, and Z position by the end of this year. And I, instead of getting a bonus, I would like us to set an agreement where you wipe out all my student loans. In the next two years, if I sign a contract saying that I'm gonna work at this job doing this X, Y, and Z stuff for X, Y, and Z many years. And you do the math, you're like, okay, do I wanna take a 2%, 3%, 5% increase in income where I'll have to pay 30, 40, almost upwards of 50% in taxes on that, on that increased income? Or can I just have the company pay off my debt and I work at a set income, right? There's, got, there's gonna be a give and take. Set income, no bonuses, no increases for the next one, two year. And in those two years, you wipe out all my student loan debt. You run the math on it. See, okay, 200 grand versus paycheck increases at every six months or every year at say three, 5% increase in income is nothing in comparison to the amount of debt and interest I'd be saving if they just wiped it out, right? I've had people do this. I've had a doctor do it where they moved from one practice to another, had it in contract saying that after two years or so, all his medical student loan debts gone. And he stays at this current income. And for the time being, this is my word I was talking about, um, servicing the debt, right? If you just service the debt, meaning you just pay the monthly minimum payment, you do not intend to pay that off. Well, isn't that a way of turning something bad into a, a good situation here, right? So maybe maybe not every single strategy has to be you, 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 you paying off all the debt. There is a lot of money in the marketplace today sitting in other people's bank accounts and you just need to have the correct keys, like having the keys to the kingdom. You need to have the correct keys to open the right doors into other people's bank accounts and they can move that money into your account or remove certain things off your plate that you no longer have to worry about. Nobody talks about this. All the financial coaches and all the gurus, for the most part, not the ones that I spend time with because there's very few of us, but the majority of financial coaches and advisors, it's all about you, 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 you. But there's no strategy that talks about how you can be leveraging other people's time, other people's talents, other people's treasures, other people's money to advance your position in the next few years. The danger of a good debt is that it can easily become a bad debt. That's one danger. Full transparency. That's the reality. How is that, Denzel? Well, if you don't know your numbers, if you're not a good manager of your money, if you decide to be a clown, instead of making that 25 grand investment, you bought a Louis bag. Oh, no, no, no. Let me go a little higher. A Hermes. All right, my girlfriend was telling me about that. She was like, babe, don't walk into that store yet. I was like, why not? Let's go check it out. She's like, don't walk into that store yet. Don't do it. I was like, oh, okay. Shoot, they got scarfs in there for like multiple Gs, if I'm not mistaken. If you're not going to be a clown with other people's money, then you don't have the worry that people put on you to avoid like the plague. You have to understand where they're coming from, right? So that, that term, avoid debt like the plague and debt is bad. Look at where they're coming from. What happened in their life? Oh, because in 07, 08, they were leveraging variable mortgage rates 
in real estate and they were investing and making all this money and then all of a sudden the market crashed and then rates changed and banks got tighter and they couldn't do no more fix and flips and so they had a terrible financial traumatic experience using debt and then they developed a strategy to get themselves out of debt and so they took the next five to seven years ten years paying off all their debt and they said i will never look at debt ever again and they cut up their credit cards and they did all this wild stuff okay cool no problem totally respect you right you learn from your mistakes but to impose your financial traumas onto other people and call it financial advice uh oh there's a little bit of a disconnect for me so i what i like to do is simply show the options and then allow you to make a decision so we've got the idea can all opinion here the idea of good debts bad debts and how we could be potentially using good debts right now okay because of what's going on in the next year or two market correction banks are going to tighten in lending mortgage rates just went up what i could potentially be doing as a employee self-employed or business owner it would be wise to make sure your personal credit scores are in good standing your business credit scores are in good standing you have good business credibility things are in line and you're ready to receive capital the beautiful thing about receiving capital in the form of revolving is you're not in debt until you actually use it so when we um when this person gets this 50 grand let's say they're not in debt 50 grand until they what withdraw it use it right versus if they got a fifty thousand dollar loan right if they applied for a fifty thousand dollar amortized loan now they're in fifty thousand dollars of debt day one 50 grand shows up where in the checking account and now you have an interest rate and a monthly payment to worry about and no matter when you make that monthly payment you get charged full interest for that whole entire month no matter what right you get charged the full interest up front for that entire month no way of getting around it unless you obviously pay the 50 back really quickly but when you do this to me this is bad debt it's not liquid I, I get the 50 all at once and now i have to make a decision with all the 50 right I, i've worked with a lot of clients that they over borrow for no reason right they over borrow money because they're scared they're worried they want to have extra money in case you know they lose their job or whatever but now you've got to service the whole entire amount versus just having access to 50 when you need it if you need it the reality is you lose your job you're not going to go and spend 50 grand right away right somebody loses their job somebody gets fired somebody gets a, a reduction in income it's not like you're going to burn through all your money in one month the reality is you'll burn through it over a period of time and so if you had a line of credit where you withdrew two grand for june two grand for july two grand august two grand right two 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 times five months ten grand i'm only in debt ten let's say a market correction or market crash only lasts in your household right it's different from a global economic standpoint but let's just talk about your household when a market crash comes a market correction the way it affects your household is only in a few ways either you lose your job you get laid off you get fired or your income uh, simply gets reduced by the company so you don't necessarily get fired but your your pay goes down because the company can no longer pay that amount of, of money to have you work there and so <clears throat> in most cases that's only for what maybe six months nine months i remember when covid first hit ton of my clients were laid off for about four to six months and in that time most of them if not all of them had credit lines and so they went from paying off debt to not paying off debt they stopped and they just serviced their debts and funneled their expenses through the line of credit or credit cards or their HELOC. And it was about maybe six months, nine months, whatever. Then the world started coming back. Okay, we're gonna open up and there's only this and these hours of the day. Da, da, da. Okay, you can work from home and then right. So we were going through that in late 2020 all the way through 2021. Now in 2022, let's say they're back to what they were making. Things are fine. They still have access to that 50 grand or however much. They're able to pay back what they used for the time being and the money's still there. And so right now I'm making content for my clients talking about preparation because I'm saying, hey, for right now, we should be either maybe not paying off debt, focusing on increasing cash flow, increasing income, and increasing our credit lines. 
okay let's go to the bank now and get an increase on that 50k so maybe you've had a fifty thousand dollar line of credit in 2020 2021 okay it's been a year it's been two years let's get a ten thousand dollar increase 15 10 5 20 increase right bank approves it great recession market correction occurs you lose your job you get laid off furloughed or temporary break or a reduction in income this now comes into play gets you through that little season whether it's six months nine months long and then we come back into it this is also a, a very good tool to use when you're trying to recreate yourself what I mean by that recreating yourself is maybe picking up a new skill and maybe that new skill is a $5,000 certification that could result in a $25,000 increase in income and you don't necessarily have the 5k but you pull it from your line of credit get the certification do velocity banking bring it down increase your income see how that can happen 